All right, we're going to continue on cutting these out. I've been cutting a little bit out here off camera. Kind of get these all ready to put in the single cab. And I've got some of them ready. I could cut this one. Of course, these were really off. Patterns for these were terrible. It was about an inch off. Plus, the holes weren't right. I mean, that's not Clara's work. She does, hers are like perfect. I'm telling you, you couldn't cut them that good yourself. So, anyway, Clara and the Samba, if you really want to buy them already done, they're well worth what she charges. I'm just, the only reason I said about making patterns is because a lot of people just can't afford that, regardless of why that is. It's just the way it is. So, anyway, let's continue on. I'll start cutting these out, and we'll take a look at them a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of 220. Clean these up. This one here says I got it ready. Yeah, I have to check the road on it ready. What I do is just take a little 220, one of my hand box, cut them with a jigsaw. I figured you guys would know how to do that. But that little bit of sanding does wonders right there. Cleans them up a lot. Best product is oil-based primer for this, but we don't have that anymore. We got something that works pretty good. It's called Alkyd Emotion Primer. There's a few different brands of it. Best one I think is Vista Paints. Uh, it's called. Uh, uh, Prime's all a little expensive, but man, it works good. 50 something a gallon, probably. So I get it, you, know, you can get a quarter of it, I think. Probably 20 bucks, something. When you guys are in frame. You yeah, fall off the wagon. You can sit there and straighten all your cuts out and everything pretty much if you want. I say that's probably good enough. And then what I do is, after I prime them once, I'll give that same edge of sand. And it keeps the fur from standing up on it. There you go. That's what we're looking at there. Alright. That one's ready. Well, these ones are a little bit thicker than the original ones, so... A little tough to get these in place, these single cap panels. I always say the ABS guy, his fit better on this part. So if you get the ABS ceiling panels, they work better, I think, for this. I may end up getting them, I'm not sure. But to get these to fit, you gotta really sand down. I think here goes in this way. So this edge you gotta really sand down. And then when you paint it, the thickness of the paint there too, so it's gonna be really tight. Let me try sanding it down and see if I can save it. I don't know. I'm just gonna like that. I 
and this part bumps it. You can see, so it goes in like driver's side, like that, and they don't bend very easily either. All right, so I think I got this one to go, but remember, these ceiling panels, the front ones, are like Chinese fingers. A lot of times they'll go in, they'll never get them back out. So I try and get them as close as I can when I'm using this material and then hope that I can bang it into place. Usually with a dead blow, I just start beating on it and hopefully I don't mess it up too bad. Um, if you want to avoid that, the ABS, the guy who makes them out of the plastic, those suckers just slide right in and you can pull them out easy. You can reuse them, take them in and out if you need to. Uh, they're, they work really good. They look nice too. They look a lot like the original ones. So that's an option. They can be painted. You have to use a special primer. I believe XIM primer works pretty good. You can probably use that and put some paint on them. So you can use those. Those are cool. Um, I think they're probably better than these for the ceiling panels for a single cab and for uh, the combi. I'd rather use those than this. But, you know, when I'm paying this kind of price, $11 a sheet, you know, it's worth doing it, giving it a try, right? So, those suckers are a little more than that. They're most, they're probably one of the most expensive ones, but they work the best for the single cab and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, the combi. So if you have a combi or single cap, I would highly recommend those to eliminate the problem. Even though Clara makes great panels for the doors, the ones for the ceiling, I've always had trouble, even with hers, getting them in, because just because the this is too thick than the original. The other thing you can do is if you want to, you can go to the upholstery supply and buy the cardboard panels, the thick cardboard. And that works good too. And you can actually paint that. You can prime it and paint it the same as your doors. So if you want that, that's an option. If you want to say, let's say you buy a set of Claro's panels and you man, they can't get the ceilings in. You could go down, trace them out, uh, prime them, paint them with, get the color match, take it to the paint store and get it matched and paint them with a roller. And they'll look very close to hers and you'll be really happy because they'll slide right in place. You can take them back out. A couple ideas. All right, so I'm getting some primer on these. Got a couple of them done. I'll show you what I'm using. Just using a Slim Jim roller, set up like this. You can use whatever kind of roller. This is a half inch nap. And this is the greatest primer right here. If you ever, that's the label. If you're in California, Southern California, these guys have the best primer. This primer is just as good as oil base. If you're out of state, a good primer is um, if they have the oil base zinzer cover stain. Really good stuff. They don't have it here. But in all honesty, I think this primer is actually better than the oil base. It's it's that good. So it's really good stuff, but it is not cheap. I think it's about, I mean, depends on where you get it. If you talk to your paint, if you go to the paint store and you find out it's kind of too expensive, um, you can 
probably talk to them a little bit and they'll help you out. You know, if you get the right person, talk to a salesman, paint salesman. He'll help you out with an account number or something like that and give you a better price. Kind of ask a little bit. You got to kind of be a little bit, say, hey, man, that seems like a lot. Can you, is, you know, can you talk, is a salesman around? Maybe I can talk to him. He can hook me up with some kind of a deal and they'll, they'll work it out. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's a little trick. Almost every salesman paint store will have an account that he knows that he could put it under and give you a better price. I'm telling you, that's the key thing to ask for when you're in there. So anyway, I'll go ahead and finish priming these and then I'm making paint right now. So I got this, they had this leftover gallon from a job. And this is another really good product. This is Protec Alkylate Emotion Satin Finish. And then see, I, could, I, I got the tints. I'm just making the color until I get it the way I like it. And then we'll paint it. Here's my dot checks, my color samples here. I think I'm right there now. It's pretty close to where I want to be. I don't know. I'm going to have to take it over to the Westie. Take a look. Kind of like how these ones turned out in here. Yeah. It's quite a bit darker. To add a lot more black or umber. I think umber was going to give me a little more brownish. Kind of want it not too slate gray, but kind of brownish gray. Sometimes the grays on the VW stuff kind of turn out a little bit green, so that would be okay too. I could go black, and that would give me the green look. The brown, the dark brown would give me the kind of a brownish look. So anyway, black has blue in it, and we add yellow, turns green. Little trick. All right, let's take a look and see how that looks. Looks a lot better. Let's look at the other side where I have a kicker on there. Well, I got the these in there. You know what I do to put these in is I take a dead blow hammer and a straight edge and I just start whacking it and you know, then bending it and stuff. They'll fit. Kind of tough to get them in sometimes, especially on the combis. And then I have to take and bend that edge down a little bit because these are a little bit thicker, even though I sanded the heck out of them. If you saw that, I don't know if you saw that in the video, but I did them that way. So that looks cool. Yeah, and I got, got to figure out this piece. I'm going to have to make a pattern for it. I got to get some stuff to do that with. I, I uh, To make a pattern, what I'll do is I'll tape some uh butcher paper up there and then what i do is i take a piece of carbon paper you know carbon paper that you know you used to back years ago you used to use it on all your checks and all that right and you take some of that you can get it at like staples and then you tape it up in place the you know kind of so it's in the same position and then what i do is i'll take carbon paper and i'll rub this edge and I'll rub that edge and I'll rub down there on the carbon on the uh, paper and it makes a makes a tracing of it so let's say you have you don't have any door panels for your car um, what you do is you just tape your uh, you take your your butcher paper and you tape it along this edge right here okay and then you know put it on and put pieces of tape all the way around it to hold it in place so it doesn't move so you just kind of Oh, well, maybe I can. No, yeah, I don't. I don't have anything to do a sample, but you just tape it in place, really good, so it doesn't move. All right, you can tape it onto the glass, whatever, and then you just take 
your carbon paper in your hand and you just rub it and what it'll do is it'll give you an outline of the definition of that edge and then you can take and rub on where this is and it'll give you a little spot there and that carbon paper will help you do it or if you got really dirty hands you can do it that way too <laughs> you know i've seen guys take their hands and go and put them in the dirt some sign installers put them in the dirt to get their hands all dirty and then just use their hands and do it <laughs> but you know it's the sign business thing i mean guys in the sign business that's how we get like if we want to copy a letter if there's a letter on something we'll tape a piece of butcher paper over it and then we'll take our hands and and then use some carbon paper on them and you just rub it on there it's called a rubbing and we'll take it down and then they can cut that letter out exactly and then use that as a pattern to make the new letter so you can do the same thing with these door panels if you don't have any door panels on your car you just tape them up and put a bunch of little pieces of tape all the way around it to hold it in place take the carbon paper rub it on there make a rubbing that's what it's called so anyway that's how you do that funny it looks a little bluer on the car than it did <laughs> out here but that's all right i like it that's fine kind of blends in I, I like it to be different i don't want this to be the same color as this i don't like that matchy stuff it looks just too boring yeah. get that up there get this little piece done gotta get that vent in there i think what i'm gonna do too here i'll show you so on this thing you know how this thing's nice and big already since it's so bad i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna kind of fix it a little bit and i'm just gonna leave it nice and big so i can put my speedo cable through there i always hate to having to run the speedo cable through here and all that stuff's in my way i could put this in very last if i did that huh so i'll just leave that i'll just kind of trim that up a little bit and i'm gonna fix this with some uh it's not like this thing's we're gonna hurt this thing at all right it's like it's a real cherry one or anything i think if it was really perfect i would just you know do it but um since it's pretty roached I mean, might as well you know have at it however i want just leave a nice big hole there so i can put my speedo cable through easily afterwards and i can actually put it in now that's what i was going to do here pretty soon still waiting i don't have these yet so i can't put the handles on i was taking the original one and i took some scotch bright it was really discolored I took some scotch bright and some uh, lacquer thinner and just sat there and just scrubbed off all that like discoloration that looks all right I might... you know the original ones it's nice about the original ones is a lot of times the the aftermarket ones will spin i don't know if you've ever seen that they spin inside like the metal part will stay in the same position and this will kind of spin and the original ones don't usually do that so i'm gonna try to use the original maybe we'll put that one on the other side i think i've got two i don't know maybe i do looks like i've got a cargo door late model I'll see if i have another one though and i got a deluxe well, I guess I need to buy another door handle. Looks like I only had one. So that's another thing to put on the list here. Things I need. So anyway, I guess we'll just proceed. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. See what we come up with next. I think I might be sewing some seats for the Westie. I remember I was saying I was going to do that. I was going to do them today, but the uh, I got the presser foot, so that's cool. I got that, but... The welt I had is this plastic welt, and my seat machine just doesn't like sewing through that stuff. So I got another one. I got the other stuff that I got for this one. And you never know, maybe I'll take that seat back off and redo it. Hey, let's take a look at this. See, I was just playing around with this a little bit. Just made a seat edge, and you can see that it's a lot tighter with that welting foot. Still a little tricky to do. I'm not said this is in a walking foot machine so it doesn't so it's a you know it's funny you know the cell right guys say that this is a walking foot and they call it a the other one they call a compound walking it's like whatever hey this is not a walking foot machine as far as anybody goes this is a 
walking presser foot machine. So the actual walking foot, the needle goes through and pokes through and, and moves. You ever seen one of those? They're way better. And it just, it just, they, you can do all kinds of stuff you can't do with that machine. So anyway, it's better to have one of those, but they're, they're a little more expensive. So anyway, and that's what I got. So I'll just keep going with it. That's my new, I had to weld it right there to make it, take to buy two of them and weld it to make one. All right, well, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll move on with the next thing on this project.